Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes React. I'm Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike. I'm Office Bloke Daz. Collectively, we are the Office Blokes. Yep. It is yep. true. What we've got going on at the moment, Office Bloke Mike? Well, we have a Patreon channel. Uh, go and have a look at patreon.com. Uh, put in Office Blokes React. Uh, you can go down there and join us for just £1.50 a month. And you can also get a <coughs> 12 months for a price of 10 at the moment. I've got loads of stuff on there. I've got stuff like Bill Burr, Keen Peel. I've got loads of fail videos. Uh, exclusive stuff. Exclusive uh, podcast of freak as well. Every yeah. Friday. We've got Jim Jeffries on there as well. Jim Jeffries, yeah. We'd had a few beers when we did the podcast yesterday, didn't we? So, we did, uh, so it should be hopefully quite entertaining. That some words were said that aren't allowed on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Keep yeah. an eye out for that. Uh, yeah, check right. it out. This is a Patreon request. It is indeed. Yeah, this is for Ben. Ben L. Ben L. Cheers, uh, ben. ben. Yeah, we've got uh, this is a video by, uh, what is it, Jimmy High Roller. I think that's the actual channel. Uh, some basketball uh, right. videos. And this is one of them. He said, pick the one that we wanted. The popular one. This will so, never happen again. I what? just went on and took a random, yeah. one of the top four, yeah. top five videos or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah so... I like it when we don't know what we're getting ourselves into. So we like a bit of basketball, I don't. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, should yeah. be good. Yeah. So let's do it then. Uh, what was it, Jimmy High Roller? Yeah. Um, this will never happen again for Ben L. Let's yeah, do it. Sure. This is modern day high school, and these are the Ball Brothers. That's who I thought it was when I saw his ah. face. Then. Oh, who? The Ball Brothers. All right, okay, yeah. Must be good if they name like that. <laughs> right? <laughs> we'll see. You may have heard of them before, and this was a high school game back in the year of 2016. One of the most prolific high school sports programs in the country coming off of a national championship just two seasons prior against a public school with a 14-year-old starting at shooting guard. Eight D1 recruits against a team with only one senior and virtually no basketball history to show for. Four years ago, this was one of the most hyped matchups in the country. But, uh, I forgot to mention one part. Yeah. Your eyes do not deceive you. This was the actual score of this game. At halftime. Somehow, these three brothers and their two friends absolutely walked one of the best teams in the entire country. And this was just one of 35 wins Chino Hills piled up that season. With no losses. Wow. But wow. let's take it back real quick. Because scores, yeah. as great as Lonzo was, as much potential as LaMelo displayed, and as dominant as Chino Hills was, this was never supposed to happen. On November 30th, 2015, Chino Hills played the first game of their season. And you could say it was a pretty solid debut, beating San Bernardino High School by 89 points. Wow. <laughs> See, wow. the Ball brothers weren't making national headlines just because they were pretty good, or because they were three brothers committed to UCLA, or because their father was absolutely goaded. They were grabbing national attention because they were really, really good. The hype they were getting was completely warranted. In the 2015-2016 season, their starting five consisted of Lonzo, Liangelo, Lamelo, Onyeke Okongwu, and Eli Scott. And this might as well have been the entire team, because no one else even sniffed playing time for virtually the entire season. On paper, this looks like a solid squad, but nothing that shouts best high school team in the country. They were starting only one senior and two freshmen. How could this team possibly run the table and come out as national champs? Well, the closer you look, the more clear the answer to that question becomes. Of course, Lonzo went on to be the second overall pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, and over the last two and a half seasons has shown glimpses of having all-star potential. He was the engine to this Chino Hills team. He was arguably the best player in the country in 2016, and without him, we would have never even heard of the Ball Brothers. Then there's Lamelo, who should have been an eighth grader, but reclassified to play with his brothers. We all saw the potential there, but as a 5'8", 14 year old, I don't think anyone could have predicted that just four years later, he would be slated to go third overall in the NBA draft. But quite- so he's pretty wow. small compared to the rest of them, isn't he? Five, yeah. He's only 14 though, there, isn't he? Yeah, he's, uh, he's got, uh, he, looks, he looks about five. He does yeah. think he looks really yeah. young. Yeah. yeah. 
This is a, I've never never heard of anything like this before. It's crazy. Did isn't you not it? know about these brothers? No, well I've heard them talked about because yeah. you you got yeah, a shirt with yeah. Ball on, haven't yeah, yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. But, but that's not, not them. That's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not to not to any degree though. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. I've heard the name has banded around. I've heard you talk about them, mm. but I've, I didn't know. I didn't play know like this before. It's absolutely. Yeah. I believe incredible. the dad's a bit of a nutcase as well. Really? Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah he looks like a bit he, uh, he tries to like living that same, you know, like the superstar that they've right, got. Right, right. I think he ah, tries right. to bolt himself onto it as yeah. well by the looks of it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Holding down the paint, cleaning up everything that came his way, was this unassuming 15 year old. Unless you follow Chino Hills closely, you've probably never even heard of this kid. Six foot eight, freshman center, Anyeke Okongwu who finished his high school career as the 20th best recruit in the entire country, has put up 17, nine and three on 60% shooting this season at USC and is projected to go 13th overall in this year's NBA draft. That makes potentially three NBA lottery picks on the same public high school team. Then there's Leangelo, who has never gotten the same love as his brothers, but what most forget to mention is that Leangelo was the leading scorer of this team. When in doubt, give it to Jello, and he'll get you a bucket. He averaged 28 points a game on the best team in the country in 2016 and was the 8th leading scorer in the nation with 34 points a game in his senior season. And last but certainly not least was Eli Scott. A guy who I always thought of as the Draymond Green of Chino Hills. Now, I know that sounds bad, but I'm not talking about 2020 triple single Draymond Green. I'm talking about spark plug, glue guy, heart of the team, all-star Draymond Green. The two least regarded players on the team, and they were both still top 50 in the country at their positions. And with these five players, and only these five players, Chino Hills had one of the most historic runs in high school basketball history. In fact, of all the teams I have ever watched, of the hours and hours of high school film I've broken down, I have never seen a more complete, cohesive, and dominant team. 2016 Chino Hills was the best high school basketball team I have ever seen. Sounds crazy, I know, but you don't have to take my word for it. Just take a look at the receipts. Throughout their national championship run, Chino Hills went 35 and zero, being the only public school in the last decade to win a national title. In those 35 wins, Chino Hills won by an average margin <laughs> of wow. 30 points. <laughs> but these boys weren't just whooping up on some garbage teams. On their path to winning those 35 games, they went through five of the top 30 teams in the country and 11 of the top 100 teams in the country. Foothills Christian was ranked as the 29th best team in the United States and Chino Hills mopped the floor with them three times that season. They also beat sixth ranked Bishop Montgomery twice. Almost half of their games were against top 100 ranked teams, and they never lost. Being Bishop Montgomery, they're ranked six. They're beating them 84 62. So it's like, you know, there's no there's argument. There's a big there, margin, there. isn't it? Yeah. Big margin. It's just mad, though, that it must be quite sad when you've got a team that good and it's high school and you know that people are going to graduate and, like, you know, if, yeah, if, it's a behind it. if it's a professional yeah. team, you can kind of hold on to people, yeah. can't you? Could keep them for a few years, couldn't you, I suppose? Yeah. But I guess yeah. these guys move on, don't they? Yeah. So Coaches are going to be like, these guys will be gone. Yeah. <laughs> like, you'd yeah. retire, wouldn't you, if you were the coach? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, say, after this season, yeah. I'm done. It's <laughs> never never going to be that good again. Yeah. Oh, wow. Go out in a blaze of glory. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know. That's what a record. Yeah, that's amazing, well, isn't it? I'd expect it with a name like that. <laughs> Among the numerous L's they handed out that year, one of them was to Montverde Academy. The seventh ranked team in the country with two future NBA players in RJ Barrett and Anthony Simmons. This is a future NBA player. This is a 14 year old. <laughs> Bruh. You can hear the crowd. They beat Redondo Union, the 13th best team in the country. They beat 20th ranked Sierra Canyon with future NBA player Marvin Bagley. They beat 29th ranked Foothills Christian with future NBA player TJ Leaf. They beat the best team in Nevada, Bishop Gorman, with Zach Collins. They beat the best team in North Carolina with Bam Adebayo. And they beat the best team in New York at the time, Jefferson High School. Do you want me to, you want me to keep going? Yeah, I think y'all get the point. With two freshmen and only one senior playing, 
Chino Hills beat the brakes off of every single team they faced. They were literally unstoppable. Three brothers, two close friends, and a public school with limited resources somehow climbed the ranks and topped every other team in the country. This is a feat that we will more than likely never see again. Not only that, can you imagine being the parents of these three kids and coming to the, you know, going to the high school sport and just watching them annihilate everybody? Oh, yeah. Wow. Hey, I can see why his dad's like giving it the bigger on the yeah, side. I'd so, be exactly the same. I'd be so proud. I'd be like yeah, just going. I'd be walking around just giving it the bigger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they came out yeah. of my balls. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to rub it? Do you want to rub it for luck? <laughs> Look what it can do. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be the biggest asshole on the planet. <laughs> Winking at all the soccer mums, like yeah, that's my yeah. scene. <laughs> that's what I can do. <laughs> oh, brilliant! That's it's absolutely fantastic. Yes. That, Unbelievable. I, I don't know what the disparity is between. I wonder what relation I am to him then. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, not the height. I don't think you're directly related. For some reason, but I, I wonder the disparity between the public schools because they're saying quite underfunded. Mm, yeah. Compared to the, were they private schools private they're up school, against? Yeah. 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 I wonder Spass what, on, you know, equipment-wise yeah. and talent and all that. I wonder what the Maybe. sort of disparity is. It's probably, is. Di probably different types of well, coaches as well, would it, well, I guess? This is, what, this is the conversation I've always had with people over the years about sports and different sports people play. And when you look at ice hockey, you need the cost of the equipment that you have to buy. Yeah. And when you look at all different sports, basketball, you need a ball, that's it. That's a, ball a fair and hoop, point. And it's yeah. hoops everywhere yeah. in parks and stuff. It's like football. I don't know, over here, English football. Yeah. You, or, you know, um, soccer, whatever you want to call it. You've got three it. parks to go around. You, you can kick it, you can play in the road. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. need anything else. That's what we used to do, isn't it? Yeah. Play anywhere. Yeah. Take a ball. Yeah. And it's like you're when right you look there. at certain things with equipment, cricket needs a lot of equipment. You need yeah. the pads, the balls, the wickets. You yeah. Can't, yeah. On talent you can't, alone. Play, can't play cricket in a little area. Yeah. Not alone. You can. It's got to be a bit more organised, doesn't yeah. it, really? Yeah. Uh, sports like that. We well, need yeah. at least three people to play cricket as well. Yeah. Yeah. You need a bowler, a batter, a batter and a can't. No. Wicket keeper yeah. or a, you know, someone be, someone stood behind anyway. Well, yeah, you exactly. Know. Yeah. So, this high school, for example, if they had an ice hockey team, but if they had no money for gear and mm. stuff like that, then yeah. that level of talent might just go unfound yeah. Yeah. and they might move on to other yeah. pastures. But I get what you're saying. But I'm pretty actually, sure yeah. schools, that people are mentioning in the comments, I'm pretty sure schools are sort of like uh, geared towards specific sports. Right. So you'll, ah, get, right. So you'll get a school specialized, specialized yeah. in, ba in baseball or specialized yeah. in football, specialized in basketball. So you'll have cut some with good teams in all, in all sports. Yeah. yeah. But you'll have schools that are definitely specialized in certain things over and above you know, yeah. the, the regular programs you've got. These are little kids. And they're basically rock stars in the school, aren't mm. they? Oh, like, I don't think that oh, exists yeah. in this country. Yeah. I've not got anything like that. Have no we? one cares not about the football team or yeah. you know, the cricket team yeah. or whatever over here. But yeah, Shamel over there, isn't it? how small he was. It's tiny. I know, he was only compared to the others. A kid. I mean, I know they're all kids sort of thing, but the kids were six foot eight. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, he's one like, of them's six he's, foot eight. He's 14. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, tiny no, little kid. I know, yeah. Yeah. Mad. But before capping off their season as national champions, Chino Hills had to face off against arguably the most prolific, proven, and deadly squads in high school basketball modern day in the previous season the modern day monarchs finished as the 14th best team in the country and two seasons prior had won the national championship led by spencer friedman a player that has personally snatched my ankles God damn! the chino hills modern day matchup was set to be one of the premier games of the season Modern Day was stacked. They were blowing teams out by 40 points every other game. With eight D1 recruits, this was going to be a battle. A private school with a prestigious sports history against a public school with a loud bald guy behind their bench. The line to get into the gym wrapped around the block, everyone eagerly awaiting the matchup of the year. Man, this is going to be a cl A massacre. Yeah. Wow. And it's that matter day, isn't it? Is that what he said? No, it looks like it. I think so. It, going off what the crowd's like, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. So, so they're not erupting, are they? No. So you're not on I home think you might be right there. No, you're away. You're playing away, aren't you? Yeah, it looks like it with the stripes up the side yeah, of the exactly. uh, court yeah. there and everything, yeah. doesn't it? So You know what? They, 
Look at the score. It's embarrassing. <laughs> if, I, if I play football and we got beat like 3 0, I'm fuming. I'm fucking smashing. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> kicking people and yeah. you know, all kinds of shit. We, we've sort of said this ages ago when we're talking about sports in America specifically. They get behind their teams, don't Big they? Time. Like, Big time. Yeah. You, you consider the difference. That's high school. And if it was a high school basketball league over here, oh, no one'd be about watching. three parents watching it on the yeah. side. Yeah. And they'll if be talking lucky. shit. They won't be watching the game. Yeah. Be on the True. phones and stuff. That, yeah. I love that. That's yes, awesome yeah, to see, isn't it? Yeah, boss. This, I mean, this game has been built up to be such like a you know the, the winner takes all clash of titles, battle, battle of the battle <laughs> giants, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah absolutely Look at that. slaughtered, aren't they? <sighs> That's the moving noise. Phenomenal, isn't it? It's a kid. Wow. <laughs> well, uh. <laughs> are you sure about that? In what would later be recognized as the best game the Ball Brothers ever played, Chino Hills absolutely ran Modern Day out of the gym. By the end of the first quarter, Chino Hills was up by 27. And by the fourth quarter, they were ahead by 51 points. Look at this. Lamelo, damn near a foot shorter than anyone from modern day, drops a dime to my man that, Draymond. I wow. mean Eli Scott, and Eli viciously packs one while modern day stands idly by, praying the mercy rule comes into effect and puts them out of their misery. Which it virtually did, since the refs had to implement a running clock to stop the game from getting any more out of hand than it already was. Modern Day's coach, the most winningest high school basketball coach in the history of California, said that he had never saw a running clock in his 34 year career. Well, that's because he had never played against the Ball Brothers. But wait, that's not even the best part. Them boys started celebrating in the middle of the game, <laughs> acting real goofy right there on the court. Didn't even have the decency to call a timeout. Just said, F it. We up 50, let him have a bucket. I'm sick to my stomach. And to make matters worse, Chino Hills was beating Modern Day so bad that while the game was going on, they were trying to think of plays to keep the crowd excited. I cannot fathom Ball. a more yeah, disrespectful yeah. way to win a basketball game. Dog. All the guys on the side wearing the same uniform that have done nothing that season. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. Mate, yeah, yeah. mate, I'd be milking it as well. Oh, I was, yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, you're in that squad, mate, and you're yeah, on that yeah, bench. Yeah. You're a part of that team. And I, I give a shit. You should have subbed them all off. They'll have been training all year. You, you're right, off, actually. New, yeah, yeah. Put, yeah. put all the rest just of them on. The running clock, I'm assuming, did, did, that means to kind of timeouts, or if it goes out of play, it just keeps going and going and going. Yeah, just keep running. To try and run it down a bit quicker. Just get it capped off as quick as possible. Well, you've got mercy rule, haven't you? I think, what is it in the UK? Is it 11 for football? Uh, you mean in junior football? Yeah, I think it's eleven, isn't it? Not sure what it's actually. Eleven down, I think that's it. But certainly, the, over. certainly when they put the scores out on the websites, it's like no more than six yeah. difference tree. If it's twelve yeah. nil, they'll put six nil. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. I think so. the mercy rule's eleven. I think once it gets to eleven nil, it's game over. Yeah, call it. <laughs> it's <laughs> just that. this is incredible, isn't it? <laughs> with it. Bringing yeah. a ruling for this game. I mean, wow. This is like just. I mean, that I can't get over the mellow ball here. How just young he looks and like tiny as compared to the other guys, and he's just bossing the game, just ripping them apart. He's, he? pulling, he's pulling moves off that, like you know. Yeah, like say something passes you don't even there. See in the they, NBA, incredible. You know, there's, I think there's a a special thing happens when it is brothers or siblings that are doing stuff yeah. like this because oh, it's got to be. they can just be on the court all day every day with each other yeah. and that sort of synchronicity yeah. that they it's can like telepathic right. path, yeah. isn't it you know yeah. like I said if they've grown up together they're probably just doing it day in day out yeah. for years but, and but years it's also and years. The, uh, the, you know, the, the, the cohesion they've got between as a family yeah. you know it's uh, you know, they'll know yeah. When one goes, the other one stays. When one stays, the other one goes. Yeah. It's, you've been playing they know where they are and, with kids. and there'll be a support network for each other as yeah. well. You're not yeah. going to be like a lone entity on a bus mm. going to a game yeah. somewhere. It's your bros, isn't it? Yeah. And they've got the dad. You know? Yeah. <laughs> they said that ball game. He's probably driving the bus. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's, it's one thing that made... Uh, Coach Hines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> back. It's one thing that made Pantera so special is that Dimebag and Vinny were brothers. Yeah. Mm. And it's yeah. like you've got your drummer and you've got your guitarist learning their instruments yeah. together yeah. from being little yeah. kids. And then suddenly there's like, you know, in their 30s. Yeah. Because he's only five players on a court, or he's, you know, it becomes a backbone of a team. Yeah. 
So three out yeah, of five, massively. you got Batman and two, and two good mates. Yes. Yeah. It's just one team, and it's five. That's all you need, them five, and that's what they did, basically. Yeah. It was them five, and they bossed it. They bossed, not only did they boss it, they, I mean, look at that. Look at yeah. That. I mean, it's just embarrassing. Oh, it's so great to watch. It, it is, I love yeah, this. Absolutely. I love it. It's rude. But that's how the majority of Chino Hills games went back in 2016. A lot of blowouts, a lot of hurt egos, and many, many highlights. I don't think we've ever seen a high school team with as much hype and attention ever, and rightfully so. What the Ball Brothers did was unheard of. It was exciting. I know this because LeVar Ball has aggressively reminded us for the past four years. But how could you blame him? His boys, along with their childhood friends, made it through the gauntlet and came out the other side completely unscathed. Yet, for as much notoriety as they have received, the 92-point game, the UCLA incident, the Lonzo saga, their own reality TV show, which, by the way, is still airing, somehow their historic 2015-2016 season has gotten lost in the shuffle. So here's your reminder. Back in 2016, a previously unknown group of kids grabbed the world's attention, knocked off the best teams in the country, and for four short months, had us all tuned in to watch the most exciting show in basketball. Hope you all enjoyed. LeVar Ball's the goat. And until next time. LeVar's the dad, innit? Yeah, yeah. LeVar. Yeah. So have they had some controversies then that you're yeah. sort of alluding to? Yeah, I've heard people say like, you know, um, when I've mentioned him in the past, people have gone, oh, he's an arsehole. Yeah, the dad. Made, what, no, oh, just the, the kids. One of well. the brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, okay. Right. Yeah, so I'm not sure what it's. I don't really pay much attention to him, to be honest. Mm. I just know who they are. Um, and I've seen some of them play for, uh, I think it's. I think it's the mellow the place for one of them plays for the Pelicans. Right. Um, I was gonna say they've got to be playing for the for the big boys now. Yeah, they're NBA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they have to be. Um, but yeah. they're rock stars from age fourteen. Yeah. So it's a thing that you can stay perfectly grounded and not have a couple of little mishaps yeah, here. And I mean, there. once you get into that level of NBA and NFL or I don't know, MLB, whatever NHL, Premier League, whatever you're in, your ego just goes up notches yeah. and notches and notches. Yeah, it will do, won't and, it? You know, especially I mean, I can only refer to like what they go through in the Premier League because I know some people who played in the Premier League and what their life's like. You're told what to eat, you're told what time to go to bed, you're told where to go, you're told who to speak to, mm -hmm. you've got to be careful who you hang around with and who you sort of like, uh, I don't know, you associate yourself yeah. with. And these people that are going to hang on to you just because of who you are. Absolutely. Of you know, course. It's, um, yeah, it's, massively. it's one of them where, I don't know what it's like in the USA because it's I've never sort of like been around anyone who's you know, been an NBA player or you know, anything like that, so I don't really mm. know how, yeah. how they behave. But I've seen a lot of news articles and whether, you know, you don't read everything, you don't believe everything you read in the news. Yeah. There's a lot of news articles that come about with certain players and you know who they are. Yeah, and they're the ones that become a bit notorious for being, you know, the wrong one yeah. sort of thing. Rodman, <laughs> you think of how many stories Rodman went yeah. through, yeah. and a lot of them you'll remember. You'll know Rodman not from being a great rebounder, no. from being a dick. Yeah, you know, it gets in the news, it makes the headlines, saying, doesn't it? He was probably the best rebounder there was in the game. Yeah, I think, I think their ego was probably boosted quite a bit by the father as well, because I think he yeah. was uh, bigging him up what, massively, wasn't he? So, yeah. do you know what though? I'd yeah. be the same. I'd be, yeah, I'd do that anyway because I had two kids who were very good swimmers hmm. when we were, you know, when they were growing up sort of thing. Yeah. I used to stand on the side and they used to annihilate everyone by half of the pool. Yeah. Then I used to be like, and I remember going to the parents evening once when my kid went to the boarding school and he said, well, he's got to focus on the sports he's, he's good at, like boxing and, um, and running. And I went, swimming. He went, I don't know, he swims. So I said, he's probably his strongest sport swimming. So he went, how do I not know this? I went, have you ever asked him? And he went, no, but we've got the swim meet tomorrow. Can he come along? And I went, you go, tomorrow you're going to the swim meet. I don't want to go swimming. I said, go swim to the swim meet tomorrow. I said, the school needs you. Yeah. So I think he was about 15, 16 at yeah. the time. And he went and annihilated won every race. And the teacher come back and he was like, fuck it, out. <laughs> three years I've missed out on this. <laughs> yeah. well, I said, well, you never asked him. <laughs> there you go. So, but I, you know, you big it up, you big it up as a parent, don't yeah, you? Yeah, of course, you know? yeah. T talking about the yeah. basketball players' lifestyles and, you know, what, what they got up to and stuff, I did hear that during the height of the pandemic when it was like they were in Hi, bubbles. Was that a joke? Was that a basketball yeah. joke? Oh. <laughs> when, when they were in, you know, a bubble that was just the team allowed mm. to interact in a hotel, there was loads and loads of women coming and going. Like there was a lot of scandals <sighs> of, you know, happens people from every, outside the bubble. Yeah, yeah like, in every annoying. walk of life. In of course every, it does. Every industry, every sport, every, you know, you like, say the same about England footballers, you know, mm. when they went to Iceland, they all got caught with hookers in the room. You know, yeah. not all of them, but some of them. You know, which is a well-known story, but I mean, teenagers get into scrapes and stuff like that. Anyway, don't they? Whether they're a sports star or whatever, you know, 
it's just part of yeah. growing up, isn't it? So as soon as the money comes, happen. as soon as the big money comes in, yeah. that's when it all changes. We've yeah, seen yeah, people throw it away recently, though, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. They're just yeah. stupid behaviour yeah. at the start of their career. That's so, why it comes into being good parenting, uh, good coaching, good environment, good yeah. people, good social network, good people around yeah. you, strong yeah, people definitely. around you who are not there for the wrong reasons. Yeah, you know? I think just explaining to him at a young age that you know your job is first and foremost. That's what you're here to do. Yeah. Is the sport. Everything else is extra. And if you keep your head down, you're going to have a great time for the next 15, 20 years. That's it. If you don't, and then you'll throw it all away and you'll be in the pub talking about what could have been. Yeah. And I know guys like that. Yeah. I saw one around the corner not long ago. Yeah. Good footballer. Played yeah. football with us as a kid. Had everything. Had the world at his feet to be one of the top footballers of England. Threw it all away because he thought he was too good. Yeah. yeah. And I was like... It's the attitude. You know, yeah. shame. Yeah. And he regrets yeah. it. Yeah. Of course he does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I bet. Could be living in a mansion it's, driving yeah. a Ferrari. Yeah. But you better be uh, you better behave yourself with a name like that anyway. So otherwise, they're, <laughs> they're looking for you. Don't well, just that's the name. After you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring my big boys with me, Mike and Dave. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, thanks for the support, Ben. Thanks for yeah, the cheers, recommendation. Mate. Cheers, Ben. Nice one. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Nice cheers. One.